All right, let's get things underway. Tenders, if you are ready, remember, it's not about how fast you are, it's about how accurate. It has to be perfect, and if we do have two stalls that are exactly the same, that's when the time factor comes in. Judges, if you are ready, raise your hands and let me know that you're good to go for the judging. Let's get this puppy started, as they say. Tenders, on your mark, in five, four, three, two, one. Toughest tender go! We do want to thank our judges that are helping us out. Bud Johnson, Isidro Valdez, Victor Santillan, Mike Portinga, Jamil Irving, Adam Gibson, Stan Kusilik, Robert McGibbon, Don Borchette, Lawrence Johnson, Wesley Sylvester, and Scott Helms. Those are the guys in the red shirts that we have around the arena. Your tenders, as you're looking at the stalls, returning champion Fred Campbell has Tony Shelton as his tender. Now, Tony has won this event twice before, not on time, but on accuracy. Stall number two, your tender, Charlie Cheatham. Oscar Gossin for Esteban Cabral. Of course, Esteban has his brother Juan in stall number 18, so we're gonna have a little battle going on right there. We do, however, will be missing Alan McLeese in stall number four, his tender, Dean McClanahan. Due to a family priority, they will not be here, so if you're looking for him in your program, we hope everything is okay with Alan. We've got tender Jose Perez in stall number five, Tony Savant in stall six, Juan Diego De Lara in number seven, Nick Miller in number eight, Adolfo Gonzalez Jr. in stall number nine. The Tuttle Group, top craftsman in 2017 in stall 10, that was Brian, his tender, Scott Tuttle, his brother, in stall number 11. That's gonna be your returning top craftsman champion. That's Darren Dalfit, and his tender is Nigel Delmez. So look for them to make an impact on today's event. Javier Chacon, Steve Braswell is his tender in number 12. Luke Wikander at number 13. Guadalupe Hernandez in stall 14. And then Ricky Mullins in 15, Richie Martinez in 16, Nick Campbell in 17. And then something new this year, the wild cards. And the wild card slots, there were four of them. And the tenders, that's going to be in stalls 18 through 21. You got Omar Mayorga, Jesus Perez Jimenez, Oscar Herrera, and then Zach Ferris rounding things out. Sean, that's our crew for today. Hey, you just ended it up on the wild card. And I want to tell everybody out there, do not overlook these wild cards. The way they earn their spot into this national competition today is through the Specmix Regional Series. But to get the, qual the qualifier as the wild card, they didn't win that local event but they did lay the next highest number in the entire country. So that means they know how to put the units in and the tenders know how to work with their mason. Did you, Tom, did you happen to see those guys throwing around those, those plank? They were like toothpicks. Yeah, it's ridiculous what goes on. And uh, speaking of ridiculous, I'm gonna throw it to our new team down on the floor. Hate to throw you guys under the bus, or I should say under the wheelbarrow. I'm gonna give it over to RC and Will Scott right now. They're in the middle of the arena. Let's turn to them and they're gonna give us a little insight into what we're gonna be seeing in the next 10 minutes. Guys? Ladies and gentlemen, this is kind of a unique competition, not only because of the work they're doing, because a lot of these guys have been here before. This is a really, really unique situation because of the heat. You're seeing guys right now, on the wall, and they are absolutely flying. There's several different techniques being used as we speak. There's a handful of guys on one side of the wall that are taking their time in the beginning. They're coming in strong right after that. And then there's several other guys that have been whipping it since the very beginning. Very, very impressive. Tom? Thanks a lot, Will. I appreciate it. Let's just sit back and just watch these guys work for just a second. You know, I think what's unique, Sean, is 
But right here in front of us is former champ Tony Shelton, who's done it twice. And I'm watching the way he is setting things up versus some of the others that are in the stalls. And I don't know, it just seems like, you know, he's either right there or maybe just a little bit ahead of these guys, you know? That could be the case. Really, the, the stalls were all identical when we started this event. And by the time that we end and we have a champion, for the toughest tender, all of these stalls will be set up exactly the same. So they all have the same number of brick, the same number of block and plank to move. They have to hustle. It's just how they use their body and how efficient they are. Hey, uh, RC, I wanted to chat with you a second, uh, Ryan Coyne, who is in the arena with Will Scott. You know, setting up the brick is also important. It's not just setting up the stall and making it perfect. There is a method to that madness. RC, talk about why it's important to have the brick set up a certain way. Well, Tom, it's really important to have it set up the right way so the bricklayer can actually place his brick properly throughout the competition. And also, it's really important for the tender to place those brick in a certain area so those bricklayers can grab it really quick. But I want to point out something here. We do have a two-time Toughest Tender champion in stall number eight. So he's working real hard. He's well experienced. He knows where his place is brick first bricklayer. And he's got his mortar boards placed in a certain area. They got a strategy here so he knows he can get the most brick to those boards so the bricklayer can lay up the most brick within that one hour. Ryan, we're in Las Vegas right now. It, it, it's a betting town. Are you trying to say that you're putting your money on that stall? Listen, I'm ready to bet on number eight. There's a lot of bets I'm making out here today because we also have two brothers out here competing against each other, bricklayers, that is. So I got some money on that one as well. Oh, wow. This is going to be an exciting day. There's going to be a lot of dollars exchanging hands at the end of the day. Yeah, I just hope those dollars are coming into my pocket. I think they are. You know what? I'm going to jump down. And the reason being, I'm going to see if I can have a camera follow me over here. Because this is kind of interesting. We've already got some folks yelling on the sideline over here. And we have just started the day. Who's doing all the yelling over here? What is going on? What is this? Who, is, who do you want? Who do you want? This is what it's all about right here. This is it. Get those families involved. All right. Hey, I, 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 I know you're right there, here. Tom. All right. Johnny Langer at, from uh, 13. Who was, the, who was the tender out there working hard? I don't, I don't know. My brother? Your brother? Get, get in here. Get in here, your brother. You dog, you. I'm trying to figure I'm like, God, that guy looks awfully familiar. Your twin? Identical twin. Well, you want to switch places real quick? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. We'll, we'll switch up. Yeah. yeah so who is who? Who do we have here? Family, friends? What? I'm his mom. Mom? Mom, what do you think? I think this is we're gonna go. That's we're gonna go. That's it. We're gonna win. Woo! I I like moms that are excited and they and they get fired up over here. Now, how long has he been laying brick? Oh golly. Long time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So is this go back generational? Is this a family thing? Really? Johnny, come on. <laughs> come here, Johnny. So this, is, this, this goes back in your family, generations? My, my dad taught me. Okay. So how long have you been laying brick? Uh, since I was 13, I started. So that's what, five, six years? You look like 20. I look like 29 years. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Well, listen, good luck today. We're going to focus on the tender right now. Mom, very nice to meet you. Here we go. Yeah. I like it. All right. Sean O'Malley, back to you at the game day desk area. Yeah, I got a great vantage point from up here, and I see all of the brick being put out there. Mortar boards are being used as spacers at this point. Hey, Will, RC, we know that these stalls are going to be identical when the toughest tender walks out, but what happens when we start the Smack Mix Brick Lair 500? Does something change at that point? I tell, you, I tell you what, it depends on the mason themselves. So just like you said, every single one of these stalls is gonna be set up the same. What that does is it allows these guys to have the same competitive advantage when the, uh, when the competition begins. Once we fire the gun and these bricklayers are off, that all that goes out the window. These, uh, these tenders can set it up however their masons want it to help speed them up. And that's exactly what you're gonna see out yep. here. 
So they're going to have their own strategy, but they can't do that until the start of the SpecMix Bricklayer 500, right? That's exactly right, and that's exactly why we designed it this way. We want everyone to start on the same foot before this competition begins. Well, I'm looking over here at stall number two with Emilio. His tender is really knocking it out. As you can see, he's already got his boards already set up at four brick high, double wide. And he's almost done here with all his brick. And I want to point out, that's a lot of brick he's laid. Each one of these building brick lay between four to five pounds. And that's about 44 pounds of brick with that brick tong, this toughest tender's laying. So he's placing it out, he's got a strategy, and he's working really hard out here. Hey, so it looks like number two might be it. Ryan, you got the stacks of brick there. How much, how many bricks in each stall are the masons worth working with and the tenders have to actually move to get in position? That is a great question, Tom. There is a thousand bricks. There are two cubes of brick, a thousand brick total. So these toughest tenders over here are picking up each stack of 11, and they range between four to five pounds. So that's quite a bit of brick they're laying. We're talking about 5,000 pounds in the morning before breakfast. Right before breakfast. I hope they ate something good here today, Tom. <laughs> Other than brick. Yeah, ooh, hey, I like that. Building brick is mighty delicious in I'm, the morning, I'm, I'm I say. Telling, and you know what? It looks really good in a wall, hey, too. If you throw a little speck mix more to gravy on, it's even better. Boy, you know how to suck up to the sponsors, don't you? I'm trying, Tom. Back to you. I love it. Thank you very much. RC and Will Scott in our arena today are going to be covering everything. Jim O'Connor, he's getting ready to take care of the fastest trowel on the block. I see mortar on the boards already. Our Mason and Tender combos over there, they're getting ready. That's going to be 20 minutes of speed and endurance to no end. It's going to be absolutely incredible. All right, let's focus our eyes right now on our toughest tenders. We're going to shut up for just a second and just see how they wrap things up over here. I'm walking around over here in the toughest tender area. I'm starting to see some people slow down a little bit. The heat is starting to get to them, but they're gonna get it done. They're gonna get it done right. Notice the pace on how it's actually fallen off from previous years. I don't know that we're gonna see that 11 and a half minute record broke today. You know, I was thinking about that and I'm realizing that, you know, these guys are all getting a bag of Marshalltown tools and they're gonna be, you know, using the Marshalltown trowel I'm just wondering if we could leave a Marshalltown trowel out in the sun, see how hot it gets, Sean, and maybe cook an egg on it a little bit later. I, I bet we could. I if bet you like a burger with a little fried egg on it, that would be perfect. <laughs> no, I, I love watch that. Where I'm at here. I'm over here in, with Steven. Look at his stall. It's almost done. This He's is awesome. Checking it right now. I don't know. I don't I... want to allude to anything. Steven in stall number 12 here has been busting it out pretty good. Hang on. I'm coming over here to stall number two. I just saw a little uh, interaction over here. Don't go anywhere, I got a camera. Hang on. So, I gotta ask you, come here. You were doing the stall, you're done, right? You're done? What were you saying to him at the very end there? I saw you kinda helping out a little bit. Just finishing strong. He's got it, we've been practicing, and he did a great job. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure that all the paper and the plastic were separate. It was almost like you, you just gave it a little bit, just a tiny little bit of direction over there. What, I mean, how important is that and what kind of practice were you doing? Well, we've been practicing in our own shop for probably the whole month doing what he's doing and he did a great job. Yeah. One thing to remember here, Tom, just because he's the first done does not make him the winner yet. We're going to have to go back through these stalls and make sure everything is correct, right? That's right. That, that's the important thing. It doesn't matter how fast you are, although he looks a little winded right now. 
Well, we always wonder what the technique is. A lot of these bricklayers are so concerned about the prizes they're going to win as the bricklayer, they actually tell their tenders to slow it down a little bit, not to use all their energy right away. I love that Emilio's got all the faith in Charlie here, no matter what it is. He said, you hump it, go win yourself some big prizes, because there are some fantastic prizes for the toughest tender. Yeah, $2,500 cash. That would be a nice check. That's a good dinner somewhere in Las Vegas. And you said you were practicing in, in for about a month. What, what kind of bricks were you throwing out there in your practice run? Uh, it's belt and brick, sort of similar, and we're kind of used to it. So. so you're ready to go? Oh, yeah, absolutely. All right. Are you ready? Oh, yeah. Ready to go. Here's a check right there for $2,500 for the toughest tender. With a time of 14 minutes and 49 seconds, from St. Louis, Missouri, John Smith Masonry, stall number 12, Steve Braswell. How about that? 14 minutes in this heat. We didn't think we were going to see anything close to that. You know, honestly, I didn't. I know we had a stall. I think it was stall two or three. It was done about 12 minutes or so. But you know what? Again, it's got to be done just right. Trey Harris with Spec Mix is with us. He's going to be giving away some wonderful prizes over there. Steve, congratulations, man. Come on in here. Now you don't have to run. It's too hot. That's okay. We're not going to make you do that. That was fantastic. What a feat. Everybody should be proud. How's it feel? You got, you got anything you want to say to the friends and the families at home? Come on, you just did it. $2,500. I was just coming out here to have fun. Thank you. Come on over here ne next to Come Tom on up Clark. on the stage. Come on up on the stage, you got a trophy. We're gonna get some pictures later.